Hey everybody, um, so uh, I'm still uh, painting up all of my uh, Necromunda stuff. Um, I, I'm a little bit burnt out on uh, fantasy right now. Like I'm playing in uh, three, three different D&D campaigns where we kind of alternate and go back and forth, but um, uh, I want to play some, some sci-fi stuff. I really want to play like Kill Team and Necromunda and Stargrave. And uh, so I decided to throw some money at the problem. You know, I bought a bunch of uh, GW plastic, um, like Sector Mechanicus and uh, Sector Mortalis stuff, still Mortalis stuff. Um, so I'm painting up these um, Alchemite furnaces, I think, Alchemite stacks or whatever they're called. Um, but I tried out some new stuff, some like kind of experimental stuff. Not necessarily like experimental, but well, yeah, new to me. Um, the, but I, I got this some really cool effects and like I really like how they look. Uh, definitely going to be using this again in the future to do some stuff like there's some uh, shipping kind of stuff that I did. Um, but anyways, yeah. Let's uh, let's paint up some uh, alchemite stacks, furnaces. Hey everybody, uh, trying a new camera setup, so uh, bear with me. Um, let's see if any of this video is usable. It's probably usable, just not very good. Um, so I'm I. Uh, Painting up these guys, I need to do seam lines, and these there's some pretty horrendous gaps on these, like the way that they uh, fit together. So I'm going to first up. Um, what am I doing? So I'm going to use some, this is, um, this is Tamiya Extra Thin, it's just in a little squeeze bottle. I have um, Tamiya Extra Thick. This is, the, at one point this was Tamiya Thin, but now it's mostly just acetone with some uh, plastic sprues melted in the bottom. But then if you put, put it in a gap, then you can like do a weld. <laughs> just put some plastic in there, some melted plastic. But anyways, yeah, I'm going to put some of this into all of these little cavities. I just feel like this is easier than brushing it on. So that actually creates like a weld in there, um, in the, the little join. So if I shove these together, it's actually going to soften the plastic a little bit and uh, like it should take care of some of those gaps if I just push them together. So you can see how this stuff, it like, it actually melts the plastic. So you can brush on it like this. And it will create, it will do like some gap filling. If the gap isn't too bad, it'll just soften that plastic and melt it, melt it together. This stuff is fantastic. It also creates just a super, super strong weld, plastic weld. Okay, so I uh, tried to, you know, do uh, gap filling in there as best as I could with the, uh, um, to be extra thick, <laughs> etc. So now what I'm gonna do is, um, and, and I want to, you know, scrape my uh, seam lines again to get them flat. Um, like here, you can see, like it did a really good job with the weld. So 
so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna scrape the seam line flat, and then now to do uh, to do some more gap filling uh, because like these are really bad, really noticeable right there. And I know it is like a weld, but if you look at like these these um, little bolts, like those are a uh, oh, this is like a solid piece. This is a solid piece. These are bolted together, so it's not as big of a deal. But um, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use some uh, Tamiya putty to do gap filling. Uh, so, stuff so is again like Tamiya, you know, great stuff. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a really crapped out brush and uh, just brush it in there okay and now um, <clears throat> you can see that this stuff kind of has a little bit of a texture to it and you can like sand it flat like you can use just some sandpaper or something and uh, get rid of the that texture. But um, I like the texture. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take this stuff and I'm just gonna kind of mash it in, like do some stippling all over with it. And it kind of has like a, um, almost like a toothpaste consistency to it so you you know you might you might look at it and think that it's kind of a lot of texture but it doesn't show up that much after it's been primed it's like it's pretty it's actually pretty subtle so you can go pretty like overboard i mean you might think that you're doing more than you're actually doing i guess <laughs> if that makes sense like it feels like you're doing more than you are. Uh, so yeah, you can just kind of like build up some, some, some texture, like, cause this is just too smooth. Like if this was rolled steel or if it's rusty, you know, or like it's gonna have a lot more texture. So yeah, this stuff, it has um, acetone in it, and I'm not sure exactly what all the, but basically once it bonds to the plastic, it is on there, it is not coming off. Um, but you can clean it up with some uh, mineral spirits. I mean, it's going to destroy your brush. It's not really going to be any good for anything else besides doing this, but it does come off with uh, mineral spirits. Okay, so I uh, took took these guys outside and then I uh, hit it with some of this uh, Rust-Oleum chalky finish uh, spray paint. And it actually, you can get it to kind of build up a little bit of texture, but that's not what I'm using it for. Um, it's just gonna be that really, really tough layer of primer, like indestructible kind of, uh, primer um and then you know if like it, i drop it or whatever if if some of the paint comes off it's just gonna look like metal or whatever uh and then i did a bunch of um test pieces um i uh, i'm tempted to do graffiti on these um i have like every piece of 
uh, 40k terrain or like models or whatever that I painted that I've sold, I've made money on. So I'm a little bit worried that if I do graffiti all over it, that it's gonna mess up the uh, resale value. But, um, and if I ever feel like selling this stuff, but I did all of these test pieces to try out some different, uh, some different looks. Um, so well, this is, um, this is hairspray chipping or, or, well, this is, this is a different kind of chipping right here. And I actually really like this look. Um, I did a few different styles like this, this is, uh, which one's all airbrush. This one is a hundred percent airbrush. This one has, uh, I used a little sponge, just a little piece of, uh, you know, foam, packing foam insert, and then just built up the, um, the kind of rust effects with a sponge. And then this is all, you know, uh, just with the airbrush and then chipped off with a, with a brush and, and hairspray. So it's a different kind of look. And then this is, this is very stylized. It's not very realistic. Like when, when paint chips, it doesn't use, the primer doesn't usually show through like that. You know, it comes off and like you, you can see on this one, if you look like really close, there's like little spots where the primer is showing and then the paint is chipped off on top of that. That's more realistic is like this. Um, or, or like this with the kind of streaky stuff coming down. Uh, so anyways, yeah, I, I like to do little test pieces before I just go crazy on my, um, uh, expensive GW plastic. But then like this one, I did airbrush and then I did a little bit of sponge stippling. And then I did the two layers of, um, this one, I just, I, I did a, a, like a primer coat and then I did a hair, or hairspray on top of that. And then I did a, another layer of paint on top of, so two layers of hairspray in between. And then, um, uh, paint on top of the primer. I think this is my favorite. I think that this is my favorite look either this one or this one for these uh because these are supposed to be these like they're supposed to be furnaces um i'm still having a little trouble making up my mind which i like better but it's between these two so anyways first off i'm gonna do a rust layer on this um I like, I like these too, but I think I'm going to use that for something else. Different, different terrain. Uh, but so first off, I'm going to go ahead and do a rust layer with the airbrush. Okay. So first up, I'm going to use this, um, uh, Vallejo Rust Primer, <clears throat> German Red, German Red Brown. Um, but it's just, it, they came with a, uh, like an airbrush, uh, rust set. This is, this is Vallejo Model Air, but it came in the same set. Um, so I'm going to thin that out a little bit. Almost one to one. I want it to be uh, like skim milk consistency to go through the airbrush.
So now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take this color and I'm gonna dump it in here, dump it back out. And then I'm going to scrub the cup a little bit. And then I dump it back out. And oops. So um, the, this is, you know, thin, and then I'm gonna add the, just add this color to it because I want a, a lighter color. Um, I don't mix colors inside the paint cup. You know, you can. It's kind of a pet peeve of mine because when I see people do it, because you can't see the color that you're mixing. Like you can't actually tell what color it is that you're mixing until it's like on the model. So it's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine because I see people do it and it's like, you can't even tell what color you're shooting out of your airbrush. Um, <clears throat> so I just, I like to mix it up like in a little blister pack like this before I put it back into the paint cup because then I know that I'm using that color. Um, and then that's not quite light enough. I might even, I'm gonna dump a little bit of that out. All right, change my mind. I just wanna use this pure color. But there's gonna be a lot less of this. Um, and then you could you could totally do this with um, with a brush too. I'll just show you um, just kind of what that. So what I would recommend is to kind of like wet the area. This is this is how I would do it if you weren't going to use the uh, the airbrush to do this layer. Just kind of wet it, you know, and then use some of the. And then that'll get that to like run all over like that, sort of similar to an airbrush, you know, and you can see that that's already looking pretty good. That's looking like some nice uh, rust tones and we've only put on, you know, two colors, so. Actually, I'm really liking that, I'm digging that. I'll just keep going with that. So uh, yeah, I was waiting for uh, for these guys to dry because this part, this all needs to be dry before I can uh, move on to the next part. So I was trying to get like all the rest of this stuff done, you know, or, or get that going while I was waiting for these to dry. And I ran out of two tubes of paint uh, I used up all of my surface primer and all of my rust color because they're kind of the same color. And then I mixed them. I like mixed it up, like kept adding more thinner and stuff to try and stretch it out to finish these. And like it just turned to water basically. But, uh, and then I got a clog. Um, this, this little, this thing, this little glob of paint was stuck in the airbrush. So it always feels like a badge of honor to like polish off a couple of tubes of paint and then get a clog and then have to, uh, you know, it will be frustrating for most people. For me, it feels like, um, feels like a badge of honor. But anyway, so what I wanna do now 
is um and like this at this point like that that looks cool you know that's that's definitely a convincing looking rust like you could stop at this point and be happy with it and call it good um but what i what i want to do is i want to do some chipping paint and then chipping uh like kind of like uh steel sort of like cancerous steel you know where the this stuff is uh corroded and uh so how so the next step is going to be to use uh hairspray and salt all right so um I was gonna do hairspray, but I decided I'm gonna try, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Um, so I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna do chipping medium. And um, so you're supposed to put this through the airbrush, um, but I feel like it's way too thick for one to go through. I haven't tried it, but it just doesn't look, it looks like really thick and goopy. Um, but what it what it does work really well for is um, is if you use a sponge because um, what I can do is I can kind of uh, like really control where um, where the chipping happens. So if I want so I want the it to look like these streaks are coming down, but then the paint that's in here. I want that to stay because it, it'll be like protected from the elements. Um, like I want chipping up here on top. And then this will happen from like the scraping of the, the brush. Like when I um, use like a toothbrush or whatever later, but this is only going to chip in um, in these areas <clears throat> and then um, I'm going to do some like acrylic washes and stuff on top later I'm tempted to do an oil wash but I don't really I don't know how um, how well oil washes work after you've sealed things. Like I need to seal it, the uh, the hairspray chipping stuff. Um, before I start doing washes. So, anyways, I will come back to it when I'm ready to do more airbrushing. All right. So first up. Um, to make like a primer layer, you know, primer um, under. So, and then you can see where the, the chipping medium is because it's glossy. Um, so I'm just, I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna do this, uh, like a, I'm going for like a look like this, where some of the, um, I want some of the primer kind of showing under the red and then, um, and then I'm going to do some sort of rusty chipping uh, metal stuff up here. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do this gray first using some Vallejo Model Air Neutral Gray. Then that down a little bit. And I do want it pretty thin. I want it to be like kind of broken. Because the paint is just it's not supposed to be in good shape.
Okay. So now, um, and then you can see that like, I'm not too worried about overspray or, you know, I don't want good coverage. I want it to be like choppy, kind of um, broken coverage. And then uh, I am going to put in some, like statues, some uh, like thick layers of red now, but I'm gonna chip it off. <laughs> so, um, yeah. It'll make sense later when I do it. But again, this is gonna be pretty thin. Not not too thick and opaque. Alright, yeah, I think the red was definitely the right choice. <laughs> um, so these are supposed to be like furnaces. I like that. I like the idea of them being color coded like red hot. Um, Alright, so I'm gonna do some dry brushing. I'm gonna use some uh, P3 cold steel. Uh, and then I'm going to use a flat. Let's see. Just kidding. I'm going to use a small makeup brush. So I'm going to dry brush all over, but from the top uh, and then I'll show you what the what the chipping looks like with a dry brush. So I'm just doing like a normal kind of dry brush. As if I was trying to pick out metallic highlights. Time for the cool part for the reveal. Uh, so I'm just going to take some clean water and uh, I've got a stiff brush. Uh, this is like a stencil brush. It's like, I think that's hog's hair. So I just work some in and then I can be as aggressive as I want with the, um, with this because the, the, the chipping medium is where I put it, you know, so it's going to come off where I, where I put it and not anywhere else. Um, so let's see, how does that look with the, with the rust? Yeah, it's working. Got some, some, some rust, like some scratches, you know, and then like kind of, it looks like metal cancer. Um, Yeah, so it's it is it's doing it's doing exactly what I wanted it to.
but I'm just going to keep working it in there. And then you, you just, you, you get it, you know, you get it wet and then, um, it, it dissolves the, the stuff, the layer under, and then, you know, uh, uh, brush it away after. So yeah, it needs to like kind of work in there a little bit and then you can brush it away. But I want to leave it, um, I want to take it off in like places like this where the, you know, the water or whatever would be coming down and leave it in areas where it would be like more protected, like in little lips, you know, areas. So um, these are still a little wet. I just kind of mopped a little bit of the water off here, um, but you can kind of see, you know, you can see the effect. I really do like the red, even though most of it chipped off, but I even got some of my little primer to show. You know, it's a subtle effect, but I see it. I know it's there. I like it. Um, so anyways, what I want to do now is um and i'm just i'm just gonna keep going like these are uh i want to get these out of here these that's just little paint chips that are loose um i don't want them in there i want them I want those off but um so before i before i even let things get dry and I'm gonna have to seal it, seal it all down at some point with some some varnish or something. Um, I'm going to start throwing on um, Irax Earth Shade in the uh, in the the cracks, like places where I want little streaks, and then I'm gonna start shoving uh, pigments into there and then when it dries it's going to look like that kind of very uh i don't know the word oxidized i guess really rust is ox yeah you know you know uh so yeah i'm just going to take some acrylic surf shade and then kind of put it in the you know in the cracks and stuff and then i can take like some of this red pigment just kind of shove it in there that's another reason why i wasn't really worried about the overspray is because this area where the um where the you know gravity is kind of pulling things i'm just gonna put this down here So where, um, where the gravity is, is pulling the, uh, the wash, you know, in here, it's just gonna, it's gonna cover up any of that overspray. Um, you can just put like different, different colored little pigments in there and kind of, you know, just go crazy with the rust. So I, you know, I do want to leave some of this stuff, like the shiny parts, but then have like, have rust streaking down off of the parts where it's really rusty looking, you know, and kind of like collecting around like little nuts and bolts and in like crevices and stuff. And then if there's more paint that comes off, then so be it. Like I, I'm not, not worried about it. I'm just going to let it happen.
Okay, so I think this one's the most dry. Mm, yeah. Um, but you can see what that uh it's pretty convincing looking rust. Um and then I'm still gonna I'm gonna let these get nice and bone dry and then I'm gonna hit them with a uh um a, a lacquer something to seal in all that stuff. The um so the pigments, you know, like they aren't really they aren't really gonna come up because they have the the binder from the uh the Acrox Earth shade in there. They have some acrylic binder holding them down, but I'm still gonna seal it because like and also like with the paint chips and stuff, I don't want any more of those to come up. I just want to leave it like that. So I'll seal all that down. But I'll show you uh some pictures of what it looks like after Everything is totally dry and sealed and uh, better, uh, better lighting. <laughs> 